Artikel Kroke veroorzaak jaarlijks daar duizende rande in verliezen als gevolg van die noodgedwongen afgradering in kwaliteit. Enrique Verster van Artikels SA braai uit hierover. Then, Plus TV recently visited James Moorcroft from Cypherpan Harrifords in Queenstown to hear what he has to say about his well-tempered breed of beef cattle. But first, over to Lisa with the latest agricultural news. Ilanco, we are driven by our vision of food and companionship enriching life. In vandagse nies, a groep Noordkaapse besproeingsproducent het onlangs a beroep op Eskomse leiers gedoen om beerdkracht met meer inzicht vir die bedrijf toe te pas om oeste onder besproeing te red. Volgens die producent hou onder heel matige beerdkracht en kracht toevoer wat tot 40% verminder a risiko in vir hierdie oeste. Onegalige bemesting vind ook as gevolg van beerdkracht plaas. Die Westkaapse Provinciale Minister van Landbouw, Dr. Ivan Meijer, het ook een beroep op Eskom gedoen om speciale voorsiening te maak vir boere wat vir die oesseisoen voorberei. Dr. Meijer het die afgelope paar weke talle klagtes ontvang van boere wat vir die oesseisoen voorberei oor die negatieve impact van beerdkracht op hul boerebedrijbegede. En die mededingingstribunaal het onlangs die samensmelting van VKB en GWK goedgekeer. Dit volg na gesprekke tussen die twee maatskapie wat reeds in juli 2020 afgeskop het. Die samensmelting en ontwerp van die transaksie is gedrijf dier verteenwoordigers van GWK en VKB in samenwerking met een externe onafhankelijke coöperatieve adviseer om een ooreenkomst saam te stel wat verseker dat al by partije beskerm en bevoordeel word. Volgens rolspelers gaan die transaksie groot geleentede vir al ons belanghebbendes ontsluit. Then in Kosi Zuelotando Mabandla, AfriForum and the Family Farmer Network SAI recently launched a joint indigenous felt goat agricultural development project in the Eastern Cape. This entailed the delivery of the first 21 Nguni indigenous felt goats to Nkosi Zuelotando's farm, Mkitjani. The joint project has planned duration of six years. The base herd consists of a total of 41 Nguni indigenous felt goats procured over two years. The aim of the project is to establish one profitable and sustainable indigenous felt goat herd farming enterprise and the next three indigenous felt goat development projects at the end of the six-year period. And that's today's news. Artipel krake veroorzaak jaarliks daar duisende rande in verliese as gevolg van die noodgedwonge afgradering in kwaliteit. Baie navorsing is die afgelopen klompe jaar gedoen oor krake wat dier siektes veroorzaak of vererger word. Een groot toename is ook in die laaste paar jaar waargeneem in krake wat in krake veroorzaak word dier onkruid doeders. Dis waar ons vandag gesels met Enrique Verster van Artipels SA. Enrique, welkom. Baie dankie, Lisa. Ja, Wat is die belangrikheid van artipelkrake? Man, die ekonomische verliese verbonde aan hierdie krake is maar die groot ding. Boere, boere lei daar die daar duisende rande se verliese elke jaar. Jy kan nou self dink op die mark, een klas 2 artipel verkoop teen minder geld as een klas 1 artipel. Um, so, dit, dit is wat dit die groot ding maak. Um, die realiteit is nou man, het niemand wil een lelike artipel koop nie. So, um, dit is toch net een kosmetische probleem, maar die feit van die saak is die mark wil hee, wat die mark wil hee. Nou, ek hoor, daar is verskillende types artipelkrake. Wat, wat, wat is dit verduidelik vir ons? <laughs> Man, die, die uh, artipelkrake neem verskillende vorme aan en die terme van verwijzing kan per ty keer bykie verwarrend wees, want hulle, hulle lyk of baie verskillend of baie die selfde. 
Um, so ons, ons praat dees daar, jy krij jou normale sandspleet, boere ken dit al baie jare lang, um, dan het jy jou, uh, die nieuwe krake wat dier onkruidoders veroorzaak word, um, en dan het ons die krake wat dier siektes veroorzaak word, um, ons kirkachtige krake, koolkie kraks in Engels, en ook dan nou uh, spleetskurf of, of visherskap, um, soos ons daarna verwees in, in Engels. So waar aan kan hierdie krake toegeskryf word? Dit is twee ledig, Lise. Um, jy krij jou abiotische faktore wat hierdie krake veroorzaak en dan krij jou biotische faktore. So abiotische faktore is maar net, beteken maar net nie levend nie, so dit word veroorzaak hierdie omgeving, uh, waterstress, um, verkeerde plaasing van kunstmis, plantestand wat oneverredig is, daar die klas van dinge en ook dan een onkruidoders um, uh, wat het affecteer, en dan jou biotische factore aan die ander kant um, is, is, is die siektes veroorzaak, so dit is levend, biotis beteken levend, word die siektes veroorzaak, so um, ons noem het pathogene, pathogene is siekte veroorzaak op kinde um, um, organisme kies, en hulle veroorzaak jou uh, spleetskurf en jou perkachtige krake. Nou hierdie biotische faktore of pathogene waarna jy verwees het, wat is die impak daarvan? Navorsing het die afgelopen klomp jaar getoon dat um, hierdie pathogene self verantwoordelik is vir die krake. Ek denk nie mens kan ander biotische en abiotische faktore uitskakel nie, maar die navorsers het bevind dat selfs klein knolliekies um, wees hierdie symptome. So dit wil half, ek kan, ek kan dit terugtrek na dit sê, dat hulle toch direct verantwoordelik is. Um, hulle sal sekondar ook kan infecteer. Uh, so as jy reedse sandspleet het, bijvoorbeeld, en die vel het al nog nie mooi gehaag nie, kan hierdie bakterie ook sekondar, of pathogene ook sekondar inkom. Um, so dit is dus hoe dit veroorzaak word um, die groot ding is ook die studies het bewys dat hierdie siektes grondgedraagd is, ons praat van rhizoctonie en streptomyces is die pathogene um, hulle is grondgedraagd hierdie splete word veroorzaak as hulle beide of een of die ander ene in die, in, die, in die vergelijking betrokken is. So wat die mens ook moet in acht neem met, met biotische factore is die siekte driehoek wat pathogene betref. So die siekte driehoek is klassiek jou pathogene, jou omgevingstoestande en dan gaseer. Wanneer die drie faktore um, teenwoordig is, dan manifesteer die siekte, as ek het nou so kan noem. Dit is maar uh, in plantpathologie hoe ons kan verduidelik, ja. Ja, dit is dan meer oor die impact van die biotische faktore, sy het ook vroeger verwijs na die abiotische omstandighede. As ons terugkom, gesels ons verder daar oor. BKB, die betrouwbare tuiste van landbouw. BKB, die betrouwbare tuiste van landbouw. Welkom terug, ons gesels oor Artepel Krake met Enrique Verster van Artepels SA. Sy het voorheen verwees na die impact wat biotische faktore met ander woorde siektes op, uh, op Artepel Krake of Artepels het. En nou praat ons oor die abiotische omstandighede. En soos ek verstaan is dit nou iets waar boere nie veel kan doen nie. Dit is nou iets soos... Uh, wat in klimaat voorkom. Ja. Uh, hoe ontstaan sandspleet? Uh, Lise, uh, daar is seker goed wat boere kan doen, maar soos jy sê oor die algemeen is het maar redelijk, dit is daar, dit is nie daar nie, partij keer is dit kultivar afhankelijk ook, so partij kultivars maak meer sandspleet as ander. As ek een voorbeeld kan noem, um, gestelle artepel ervaar waterstress, hoog temperatuur, daar die klas van ding, en direct daarna ervaar hy baie reinval, hoog besproeiing, 
Um, dan wat klassiek sal gebeur is dat die binnenkant van die aardappelicelliekies wat nou baie vinnig water kry uh, ontwikkel baie vinnig, groei baie vinnig en dit hou nie baie by die weerstand van die skil nie so die skil bars dit is maar soos een ballonnetje wat jy te, te veel oplaas uh, die, 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 die bars sal dan nou gezond raak het sal weer verhaard en um, daar sit jou kraak mm-hmm. onkruid doederskade weens uh, wat krake veroorzaak, wat, wat behels dit? Ons sien het al hoe meer, ek dink um, daar is een groot toename in ach, daar is soveel middels wat boere kan gebruik en uh, onder omstandighede waarna bijvoorbeeld met vliegtuig bespuit word. Um, Partij keer kan een mens nie die, die oorwaai skade of drift soos ons omken um, noodwendig beheer nie. So, artikels is baie sensitief en se- ter in sekere um, um, stadiums in hulle levens, dan alles wat opgeneem word gaan direct naar die knol. Ek het die val knol in die CHC is dan nou wet van daar tot knolvulling is, is baie belangrijk. So, as hy onkruid door daarop tel, um, veroorzaak dit hierdie skommeling vir die aardappel en ons sien dan op jou en as die uitgehaal word hierdie krake het ontstaan. Aardappel is soos ek sê baie sensitief. So um, baie vatbaar en as hulle met sekere omkruidoders in kontak om wat hulle nie moes nie, dan, dan sien ons hierdie probleem. O oh ja, dankie vir al hierdie inlichting. Ek het nou baie geleer vandag. <laughs> Vrouw plezier Vrouw daar sy. So is die Hendrieke Verster van Aardappels SA en ons onderwerp vandag was alles oor artbel kraken. Onstel bekend, die nieuwe, sterker as ooit tevore, 165 kilowatt Hilux GR Sport. So the Moorcrofts, I think we started with the Herefords in 1898. They brought, we brought our first over, when I say we, I mean George John Moorcroft brought his first cattle over to uh, the top of Pennell Pass. That, so we're going on to nearly 125 years as, as the Moorcrofts in the country breeding Herefords in South Africa. Uh, my grandfather came into this district, the Queenstown district, in 19 in the 50s, um, where then we they started the safer pond. They started the safer pond herd then. Uh, we we tend to find that they do quite a lot quite a lot easier than some of the other breeds uh, that we have tried in the past. Um, this area specifically is quite a sweet sweet felt area so availability of, of, of food in the winter months does get a little bit scarce but they the cattle tend to do quite well they're very very good converters so what they are getting out of the felt they are turning over very very well um, the we get quite harsh winters here uh, I know it doesn't seem like it but we get very harsh winters and quite um, hot and wet summers and yeah they tend to do a hell of a lot better in, the, on, in those very harsh winters because they they adapt very, very easily to the cold um, and then to the heat, they lose their coats quite quickly. Um, I think it's maybe that these have just adapted to the, the, the district itself. They've been here for so long. But yeah, they just generally do a lot better than what we, you know, breeds that have that have been tried in the past and, and um, sort of have been phased out. We had a very, very obviously extreme drought here and yeah, the cattle, they managed to get themselves through it. Uh, they, they've survived that and yeah, I mean, with the good season that we've had now, they, they've just sort of flourished and kicked on after that. We tend to try and keep it as extensive as possible, even with the stud cows. Uh, we run them as, as, a, as a commercial herd, if you want to call it that. We do a, a summer lick program with a P6 in, in the summers, when the, in the green months. Uh, going into winter now, going through now, we're going into autumn and winter, we'll start using a protein lick. We normally go for about uh, between 40 and 45% protein uh, winter lick. And then coming up to calving, we'll, especially with the, the, the younger heifers coming up to calving and mating, we'll then use uh, a production lick, like a 30%, 35% production lick going into those months. Um, production cell is on the 1st of September, it's coming up now. We're quite happy with the with the group of bulls that are coming through now. Um, I think on, on sale day, they'll be testament to what 
we as, as Afcon have sort of strived in the past to, to produce and these guys that are coming onto the sale in September will be probably some of the better ones we've probably produced in the last few years. So. If she can give us a calf every year, then she gets to stay on the farm. <laughs> Obviously, you got to pay rent if you want to live on this farm. Um, other than that, you know, we tend to, we've, we've got our breeding uh, over the years. Obviously, we've bred, we've bred for that. So uh, we find that they are quite a lot, uh, they're very, very fertile, these cows. And um, yeah, if they give us a calf, we, we give them another chance and until such so day that they don't and then Sorry, you're gonna be, you're gonna leave the farm. Yeah. For us, fertility is probably the biggest trait, um, the biggest or the most important trait. So, if a cow can calve every year and uh, be within an RCP of of that year, you know, we we're gonna try and keep it as close to 365 days as we can. Then that's what we look for in a cow. You know, she's uh, obviously the last few years with the drought we have call it slackened a bit um, because we physically had no food. We we we'd been feeding um, roughage that we were buying in from all over the place. Uh, we just didn't have the food and didn't have the nutrition to keep the cows in a good, in a, even a, a manageable state. We just try to keep them alive. So um, in the drought years, we have, we have sort of um, given them a, a bit of a chance, but I think most of them haven't needed that chance. Uh, most of the cows have come through that drought um, very well and they've kept they've kept their calves and they've kept calving every year. So we run a stud herd, a small nucleus stud herd and then a Hereford uh, commercial herd, a pure Hereford commercial herd obviously dating coming from those original lines and then we have a, a crossbred commercial herd. Uh, we cross with uh, the Anguses um, and then obviously in the past we have used Brahmins or we've crossed onto Brahmin cows as well and yeah we run quite a quite a good um, little crossbred baldy herd, uh, the black and white, they tend to be very, very good easy doers and also tend to have <laughs> the fertility that the Herefords, the Herefords have, you get the best of the Angus and the Herefords and yeah, we, we're quite happy with, with using them in any sort of crossbreed program that we have used in the past, the Herefords, especially using them as a, as a sire, tend to come out on top of those Hereford crosses. We always talk about hybrid vigour. Um, <laughs> Herefords tend to bring a little bit of milk to the table. Um, so that does help with your calves, your growth um, from from when they're little right through to weaning. You tend to be slightly heavier on the weaning side and right across the board they, they just tend to be very good, very good mothers.